and I think now is time, boys, to lock the door and give these girls a bloody lecture <laughs> just on what an easy life they got compared to us hard-working boys. <laughs> we had all day, all keep your legs together, cause an echo. <laughs> Where are you girls from anyway? Yeah. And you all come together, do you? Yeah. Of course, I'd like to see that. <laughs> Get them all. <laughs> now I tell you boys, we're working our bloody guts out and them women that's own doing nothing. And when now, when we get home from work, you say, is my tea ready? You don't realise what a bloody day I've had. <laughs> what a lure of crap. <laughs> for Christ's sake, when they go for a piddle, they sit down. <laughs> and you go to a disco to pick up a girl in the disco, my Christ. They make life bloody awkward, don't they? They get there about eight o'clock and they dance with a handbag. <laughs> and we boys come in about half past eleven. What? And you only want one bugger. You, you just went somewhere to bury your bone. You don't want hundreds of buggers. <laughs> but you never ever see one girl on her own. There's always two, isn't there? <laughs> so what you gotta do is team up with your mate and hunt as a pack. <laughs> now what you're looking for is two nice ones together. <laughs> Never in your bloody life. One is absolutely beautiful and the other one is a tug. <laughs> and I've been having more tugs than the Kiwi too, I have. We got out last Christmas, me and my mate, I got a mate called Slip Along Travaskas. <laughs> Jeffro, he said there's two women here, they're beautiful. Well, he got the good one, I got the bloody tug again and it wasn't my turn for the tug. And she's about eight foot and she had the biggest tits ever I seen till you come in. Well, I'm only five foot eight, I just fit right underneath her tits. I did hold her, Jeffro. <laughs> And tits is heavy on your head, doesn't it? <laughs> and she stink of Swarfiga as well. <laughs> I thought I'll give her a portion. I don't care how bloody tall she is. I don't care how high her fanny's off the ground. I'll find that bloody thing. I'll split her a bloody with. For Christ's sake! For Christ's sake, I say! Who? <laughs> oh. I said, you're, you're getting taller. She said, you're unscrewing me leg. <laughs> well, I, I got her. I got her in the Land Rover to take her own. And I, I pulled in the gateway, well, just like you do, see? And you know, ladies and gentlemen, you can have your house broke into and all your content stolen or your car took by joyriders and smashed up. You can't find a bloody policeman nowhere. <laughs> but you pull in the gateway and try to split some fucker's whiskers. <laughs> There's pissing policemen everywhere. Well, see, no, I was, I was just about to introduce the ferret. I was, see, I am the ferret, they ready. <laughs> and a bloody policeman come on banging the window. Well, that was bloody painful because the window was open. <laughs> 
Hani? He, he sent me home and on, then we, this is last winter, we was having a little fall of snow. I was feeling Randy's a bloody turnip, I was. <laughs> then I, then I seen Denzel, he was going home in the snow, right up to his neck in the bloody snow, he was. I said, do you want a lift? <laughs> no thanks, he said, I'm on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop me laughing for Christ's sake. I <laughs> ah, that's you in a minute. Who? But I, I got this girl out of the Land Rover and I was giving her a portion up against the spa shop. She said, you're not doing a very good job, are you? Well, I thought I was doing bloody good, I do. I said, well, I'm doing my best, but I said, I haven't done this for two years. I've been away in the VD hospital. That's where I've been. Oh, she said, what's the food like? She said, I'm going to eat tomorrow. But I've had, I've had, <laughs> I've had a little bit of a problem with the bloody, I tell you what I have been doing. I've been doing a survey on the behavior of dogs. And you know what it's like, you, on a Sunday night you put on your best blazer, your sports coat and your broke shoes and you, and you take the dog for a walk down the pavement and everything is bloody proper until some of this dog will come up to your dog to introduce himself. <laughs> what a filthy habit the blazing's got. They, <laughs> they smell one another's assholes, don't they? They smell one another's assholes. <laughs> I've often thought it's a bloody good job we don't do that. Say, Jeffro, meet my wife. <laughs> I've done a, a done a survey, and this is the reason why dogs smell one another's assholes. And I put it to music and I shall sing it completely unaccompanied. <laughs> For you here tonight. I wish you Christ had never started this now. This is about the behavior of dogs. Thank you. <laughs> the pissing ring leaders are you know I know <laughs> the behavior of dogs thank you <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> the dogs they held a meeting and they came from near and far some they came by aeroplane and some by motor car. <laughs> <laughs> Outside the village hall they all did stop and look. And each one took his asshole off and hung it on the hook. <laughs> In they went. <laughs> All in a pack, every mother, son, and sire. Hardly were they seated when some bugger shouted fire. <laughs> well, out they came all in a rush, they had no time to look. And each one grabbed an asshole off of anybody's hook. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> well, they got their assholes all mixed up, which made them very sore. <laughs> to think they hadn't got the one that they had had before. <laughs> and that's the reason why a dog will leave a bone to go and smell another dog's ass to try and find his own. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.